Um, and I know you, you're involved in a lot of different research projects, particularly in pediatric ER and different things like that. So I actually kind of wanted to start with something you touched on um, because it's a really big question that doesn't have a great answer, but <laughs> so what is quote asymptomatic Chiari? Um, how do you know that it's truly asymptomatic? Because something's obviously brought that patient into your office. Um, and then what are what else could be causing some of those more like non-specific Chiari symptoms, just like general headaches, um, balance or cognitive issues? So I, that's a loaded, a long question, but I'll let you answer. Yeah, that's, that is, that is, that's the important question. So it, but to start out, we have to address the, the initial question of what is Chiari? So, uh, and even that is something that we don't have a, a real clear consensus definition of. So as originally described by Hans Chiari, you know, 100, 150 years ago, it is a herniation of the cerebellar tonsils. So the back part of the brain uh, is the cerebellum. Uh, the large hole at the base of the skull where the spinal cord comes out, that's the foramen magnum. And if the cerebellar tonsils are protruding down through the foramen magnum, that's the Chiari-1 malformation. So it turns out that as he originally described, those patients had hydrocephalus. So they had an accumulation of spinal fluid in their brain that was actually causing the, the tonsils to be shoved downward. And those patients that he described in an autopsy series, they died because of their hydrocephalus, we think. And that's how this was originally described. But flash forward 100 years to the MRI era, and now we know that Chiari malformation is, is really a thing, um, and it is defined by tonsil placement outside of the head. Now, the most common threshold for this is five millimeters. There's this magical number of five millimeters. If your cerebellar tonsils, if the tip of the tonsil, is five millimeters below the, the bottom of the frame and magnum, then uh, that's considered a Chiari malformation. Well, it turns out that five millimeter rule came from a single study in 1985, so very early in the MRI era, and it involved about 25 patients. So what we now know, you know, 30, you know, 40 years into the MRI era, is that tonsil position is widely variable. And it's really a bell-shaped curve, just like anything else. Um, if you measure the, the tonsil position of 10,000 or 20,000 people, as some centers have done, you know, just looking at all the MRIs that are done, you see that sure enough, tonsil position is on a curve. So there's going to be an end of that curve where tonsil position is outside of the skull and below that five millimeter point. So the real question then becomes, is everybody whose tonsils are below five millimeters, is that, is that a problem? Is there something magic about five millimeters? And we, we obviously know the answer to that is no. Um, if you just take an MRI scan of everybody walking around on the street, about 1% of adults will have tonsil position lower than 5 millimeters, and maybe as much as 3% of children will have tonsils lower than 5 millimeters. So clearly that's not the answer. So then we have to figure out who has symptomatic Chiari and who just has tonsil position that happens to be slightly lower than everybody else in the world. And so that gets back to, I think, to your original question is what is asymptomatic Chiari? Well, in my mind, that's anyone whose tonsils are outside of the skull by, by any amount, and they're not having symptoms that are referable to a Chiari malformation, right? So then the next question is, what are the symptoms that are referable to a Chiari malformation? This is also a controversial topic. There are symptoms that everybody agrees on. So if you have a severe headache at the base of the skull, top of the neck, that comes on when you cough or sneeze or bear down, like, like having a bowel movement or lifting something heavy, that's a very typical Chiari headache, and, and pretty much everyone who treats Chiari will agree that that's a symptom of the Chiari malformation. Um, other things that we all pretty much agree on are, are likely caused by Chiari are problems with the lower cranial nerves. So the nerves that come off the base of the brain and go to your face and your voice box, throat, etc. So if you have problems with swallowing, um, choking, if you have um, uh, tongue uh, atrophy, so weak muscles of the tongue, um, or sleep apnea. These are all things that we can be pretty confident are Chiari related. So if you're having those symptoms, that's probably related to your Chiari. Right? So headaches and these lower brain, lower cranial nerve or brainstem symptoms, everybody's comfortable calling those Chiari. Where it gets much more challenging is, is really everything else. So frontal headaches, right? Headaches are even more common than Chiari, right? Chiari is 1% of the population. But how many percent, well, what, how many in the population have headaches? Well, it's everybody has headaches at some point. So, and, and a lot of people have relatively severe headaches. And obviously there's gonna be some overlap between the Chiari circle and the headache circle. So uh, 
it's it's definitely a controversial area to start talking about what other types of headaches might be caused by Chiari. And frankly, we as a field don't have a great uh, a great handle on that. I my practice personally, I don't have a lot of of good results to show for you know frontal headaches going away with surgery because that's where this question ultimately ends up. If your tonsils are six millimeters outside the frame of magnum and you're having bad frontal headaches, can I do an operation and make you feel better? Right? And and in my experience, the answer that the answer to that question is no. If you have terrible sharp headaches when you cough or sneeze, I can do an operation and make that go away quite reliably. So that's that's I think where the where the field stands right now in terms of, of sim, what are what are Chiari related symptoms and what are other symptoms? Things like um, confusion, cognition, you know, it's been described as brain fog. These are there, there's definitely some uh, thought that maybe they're related to Chiari, but it's not clearly associated. And and again, the most important question is if we operate on you, are you going to get better from those things? And I, I, I cannot uh, with confidence say that the answer is yes. Does that answer your question, Caitlin? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit.